day everybody today i would like to discuss a little bit uh, layer 3 forwarding we will speak um, about uh, local network forwarding we will speak about packet routing we will speak about uh, address resolution protocol uh, ipv4 and ipv6 address assignment routed sub interfaces S uh, svis um, routed switch ports and little bit about uh, verification of IP address on the interfaces. In my last video, I briefly discussed uh, forwarding at the layer 2 of OSI model. Today, I would like to go one layer uh, up to the layer 3 and discuss forwarding on the network layer. There are two main methodologies for forwarding at the network layer. First one, when we need to uh, send traffic to the network devices which are on the same subnet and the second one when we need to send traffic to the network devices which are on the different subnet when we are talking about local network forwarding we are assuming that uh, forwarding of the traffic happens between devices located on the same subnet within the same broadcast domain and traffic doesn't go beyond the router for example it can be uh, traffic forwarding uh, on the same um, switch between devices in the same vlan um, let's say uh, we have this small network topology with two devices connected uh, to the switch and switch co is connected to the router this is a boundary of our uh, local network and traffic uh, between PC1 and PC2 which are located in the same subnet doesn't go beyond this boundary doesn't go to router in this case when device for example PC1 needs to send traffic to PC2 it encapsulates data into packet with IP uh, address uh, of the destination of the PC2 and it detects that um, this IP address is on the same network then PC1 need to PC1 needs to encapsulate um, uh, this packet on uh, to on the layer 2 and for that encapsulation it requires uh, destination MAC address and for example uh, this forwarding happens first time and PC1 doesn't have a uh, MAC address of the PC2 uh, it needs to find out this uh, MAC address with the help of IP address resolution protocol ARP address resolution protocol or ARP is defined by RFC 862 the main purpose of the ARP to find MAC address of the network device by its known IP address and then to store MAC address to IP address mapping in the ARP cache. There are static ARP cache entries and dynamic ARP cache entries. Static entries are manually configured and kept in the cache table on a permanent basis. Static entries are best for devices that have to communicate with other devices, usually in the same network, on a regular basis. Before a network device sends datagram to another device, it looks in its ARP cache for the MAC address and IP address of the destination device. If there is no entry, the source device sends ARP request, it is broadcast request, to all devices on the subnet. Devices compare IP in the ARP request with their own IP addresses, and the only device which replies with its MAC address is the one with matching IP. ARP cache contains entries for devices that are only on the same subnet and ARP, has ARP entry for the IP of the next hop to reach the remote network. To display ARP table, use the following command. Show IP ARP and then we have uh, several uh, options to filter out output, but uh, the main ones, for example, let's say the main ones uh, which we can use, we will use is MAC address when we filter output filter output by the MAC address IP address when we can uh, filter output by IP and then VLAN with VLAN interface ID when we use SVI interfaces we can filter by in, uh, SVI interface and also we can filter by interface ID packet routing when two devices are on different networks, they need to route packets between each other in case of communication. 
When data is being encapsulated into a packet with IP address, a device detects that destination is on a the different network and that packet routing must be used. In this case, device needs to check its local routing table for the next hop IP address. It can be one of the following. It can be static route, it can be default the gateway, it can be dynamic route from routing protocol. Next, the source device needs to encapsulate the packet into a frame with appropriate layer 2 header, which contains the destination MAC address of the next hop IP. The network device needs to check ARP cache for an appropriate entry, like for local uh, network forwarding, and use destination MAC address uh, from ARP cache to form layer 2 header. If there is no entry, device needs to send ARP request, uh, this is broadcast request, to find MAC address of the next hope IP. Let's review this uh, simple example. For example, we have PC1 and PC2, uh, which are different subnets, and PC1 needs to send some traffic to PC2. PC1 forms a network layer, a layer a packet with a source RP of its own and destination IP of uh, PC2. And this uh, destination IP is on different network. Uh, PC1 needs to encapsulate uh, this packet into the frame with a destination MAC address of its default gateway because devices are on different subnets. Uh, then PC1 sends this uh, frame to its default gateway and default gateway is a router R1 in our case. When router receives frame on its interface, it checks destination MAC address and if the destination MAC address matching MAC address of the inbound interface router process the frame and checks the destination IP address. Destination IP address is uh, host PC2. Then Router looks into networking network table for network entry and outbound interface for the destination device. Then router uses ARP cache. If there is no entry in ARP cache, uh, router uses ARP request to find the MAC address of the destination device or the MAC address of the next hop address in case if there is a next router on this road. For example, we have one more router. On the next step, the router modifies source MAC address with MAC address of its own bound interface, this one, and destination MAC address with MAC address of the destination device in our case, or if there is one more device in, on this link uh, with MAC address of next, next hop device, and sends this uh, frame to the PC uh, to PC2 sees that uh, there is destination MAC address of its own, it's pro uh, PC2 process this uh, frame, and uh, everything is fine. IPv4 address assignment. To assign IPv4 address to the e router interface or to the router switch port, use the following command in the interface configuration mode. Uh, this command is IP address, then we use IP address, which we need to assign, and then the subnet mask. When the interface has an IP address and it is in up state, it injects associated network into the routing table, a routing information base. When a router injects connected network into a routing information base, it sets administrative distance of the road to zero, which is the lowest number, and defines that connected network's more preferable road to choose comparing to any other roads. It is possible to attach several IP addresses to the same interface by assigning the secondary IP for address with the following command. IP address, IP address, which you need, want to use, subnet mask, and then we need to use this word second, secondary. IPv6 address assignment. IPv6 uh, Internet Protocol version 6 was developed by Internet Engineering Task Force to deal with long anticipated problem of IPv4 address exhaustion. To assign IPv6 address to the interface, use the following command IPv6 uh, address, IPv6 address, and then prefix length. It is very simple, uh, almost the same like for IPv4. To assign multiple IPv6 address to the same interface, this command needs to be repeated multiple times. IPv6 address can be assigned to the interface together with IPv4 address.
Routed subinterfaces. A routed subinterface is a virtual interface created within an interface on the router with the command interface, then type, then interface pass ID dot subinterface, where type is the type of Ethernet interface like uh, fast Ethernet, like gigabit Ethernet. Interface pass ID is the number of interface on the router, and subinterface is subinterface ID. Uh, routed subinterfaces can be, for example, used in the topology like router on the stick, where multiple VLANs on the switch require routing uh, uh, between them. In this configuration, the interface of the switch becomes a trunk interface, and logical subinterfaces are created on the physical interface of the router connected to the trunk interface of the switch. And then each subinterface needs to be associated with VLAN using uh, the following command encapsulation dot one q and then VLAN ID. After that, we need to assign IP address to subinterface to make it like default gateway for uh, VLAN for subnet of VLAN. SVIs. A switch virtual interface SVI or VLAN interface is a virtual routed interface that connects a VLAN on the device to the layer 3 routed engine on the same device. For SVIs to be in an up state, a switch must have an interface associated with that VLAN. In an up state, and only one VLAN interface can be associated with the VLAN. SVI interface should be configured in case of necessity to route between VLANs without the need of an external router like router on the stick or to provide IP host connectivity to the device through a virtual routing and forwarding instance. That is not the management VRF. To configure the uh, SVI interface, first, VLAN needs to be defined on the switch. The SVI can be defined with the following command. We need to use uh, this command interface, then VLAN, and then VLAN ID. After that, we can configure IP address for this in, uh, SVI and use it as we need. Routed switch ports. Routed switch ports can be used for point-to-point -point link, for example, when a switch needs to connect to a router. Instead of using SVI interface and have potential that spanning tree can impact the topology, the multi-layer port on the switch can be converted from layer 2 switch port to a routed switch port. To do such a transformation, the following interface command needs to be used, no switch port. After that, we can configure IP address on the switch port and uh, use it as um, routed switch port. Verification of IP address. To view IP address uh, configured on the interface, the following command can be used. Show IP interface, then we have uh, several options to uh, uh, filter out the output. For example, brief, or interface ID or VLAN interface ID. The same uh, similar command is used to, for um, to display information about IPv6 addresses, but we have just small difference to use IPv6 in this command. And I would like to thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel. Next video I'm going to make some uh, lab uh, where I'm going to use all commands that I've discussed during this video presentation. Again, thank you very much. I hope to see you soon. Ciao, ciao.